Frankie Knuckles here on Radio 2, and that is Your Love. And that is a choice of Chris Lowe from Pet Shop Boys, who is sat in front of me now. Neil Tennant is to my right, just in front of me as well. What a good tune to start this hour, Chris. It's a, it's a great record, isn't it? I was very lucky once that uh, Frankie Knox came over and DJed at one of my birthday parties. And I've got oh, about wow. six dads. It was at Brixton Academy, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it wasn't my front room. Um, and, uh, and I've got like six dats of his non-continuous mixing and um, quite oh. privileged really to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that happen? Uh, a friend of mine was organising him birthday party for me and um, he, he just got in touch but we'd already had contact with Frankie Knuckles because he'd remixed I Want a Dog for us mm. and we'd been to a studio with him and hung out with him and um, yeah. so yeah our relationship with him goes back quite well yeah that really is, long um, way he's a, long that is, he's a big influence on you as well wasn't yeah. he um, yeah, because of house music coming along. I mean, that record, I think, goes back as far as 1987, I yeah. think. It's actually quite old, so, I mean, it was, he was there, you know. Yeah. And the uh, first time I went to Chicago, we found, you know, we went to the, the warehouse and stuff like that and, you know, checked out the whole house scene. So it was very Which exciting was such time an, musically. Yeah, that's exactly, you took the words out of my mouth, such an exciting time It really was, yeah. Because everything was changing. It was, everything sounded new and fresh. It was... You know, even though it was the late 80s, it was sort of the beginning of the 90s, really. Yeah, yeah. I remember the, um, the place in Chicago, they put up a plaque to memorialise it and Frankie Knuckles, and it was unveiled by the local congressman, Barack <laughs> Obama. No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's a very good story. Yeah. Welcome to Made of Ale. Anyway, we're here well, nice together. To be in, but you've been here before. We were just chatting and you said that there was a John Peel session. In 2002, John Peel saw us at... A festival in Barcelona, which was presumed might have been Sonar, I can't remember now, and to, and his um, production guy or something came over and said, "John wants you to do a session." <laughs> and we were we were very intrigued by this idea. How, how established were you then? Um, well, we were we were twenty years into the whole thing, pretty much. You know, um, we were on our sixth album or something. Oh my god! And um, and so we came here to Made a Vale. <clears throat> we did four songs. Um, and you had to do it in four hours. Yeah, yeah. Which was, which was, it was fun. We had two guitarists playing with us at the time and a percussionist and, um, and the two of us, of course. And uh, it was great. And John Peel, when I went out, um, said he was getting a lot of reaction. He said, <laughs> before playing one song, he said, you know, if you've got a problem with the Pet Shop Boys being on this, just pretend there's some kind of German techno band from Berlin and you'll get over it. It was really, it was really sweet. Oh, that's very lovely. No, I think he, he embraced all kinds of music. He did, Despite yeah. what people thought about his, what his taste would be. Well, so, he always liked Kylie. Did he really? John I did Peel not liked Kylie, tell me, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Also, he was a really good presenter on Top of the Pops, wasn't he? Oh, he was the funniest, With wasn't David he? With David Jensen. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, pair yeah. of them, they were great double acts. Yeah, I love yeah. David Jensen. That was yeah. my era of listening. John, I found a little yeah. bit scary sometimes, some of his music, but David Jensen just had such a broad taste. And he their, did, their yeah. handovers yeah. were... Yeah. were Absolutely fantastic. They used to do the Blues Brothers dance in the middle of the right. box. Yes. I remember that. Yes. Um, anyway, congratulations on the on the album. Uh, Thank you. Does this feel different to any other album release, or is it just here's another one? Well, it's four years. It's quite a gap. Um, it's the first time we've done with James Ford, so it's a new producer. Yeah. The last three albums we've done with Stuart Price, and, were, and for those albums we went pure electronic. For the first time, actually, we made three albums with no acoustic or guitars or anything on them. And with this, um, which we wrote during lockdown mainly, we've, for some reason, there's an auction on every track. I didn't even realise that until we finished the album, actually. Oh, really? I thought we were having an auction on a lot of tracks, but I thought, oh, there's an auction. We were doing the credits, actually. I thought, there's an auction on every track. Um, and, and James Ford, the reason we went to him is because um, people assume it's because he does Depeche Mode or... But actually, it was because we both liked The Last Shadow Puppets. Mm. Oh, really? Um, oh. And that was very much all, sort of orchestral pop, mm. throat rock. And, um, and we went to see them, in fact, at Hammersmith once. And, um, and of course, Chris liked the fact he was in Simeon Mobile Disco. <laughs> Great, I love Simeon Mobile yeah, Disco. So he had so a, he, yeah, he's, so he's a really good uh, program of, um, of synthesizers, drum programming. Um, he's a great string arranger, but he can also play the drums really well, bass, guitar. Actually, he's quite an incredible musician. Yeah, um, so perfect, absolutely perfect absolutely for this perfect album. For this, us. Yeah, this moment yeah. in time. Yeah. All right, let's play a track and we'll talk more. Petrol Boys on the show at the moment. We do loneliness from the
best thing about having Pet Shop Boys in is that we just gossip completely through all the songs. <laughs> I just, I enjoy it enormously. Um, we were just discussing Shadow Puppets and Alex Turner and what a talent he is. He is, you know, yeah. like incredible. Um, but that is from your brand new album, which is called Nonetheless, and that is Loneliness from Pet Shop Boys. Chris and Neil are here with us at the moment. So I listened to the album today, and I, I always like to listen to things not knowing what the songs are, the titles or the singles, all that kind of stuff. And I'm a big gardener, so I was in, oh. in <laughs> literally in my garden in the borders today, listening to the whole thing. And I was amazed at how emotional it is as an album. The the sound sonically is very stirring, and also the the content of the songs, the lyrics. It is. Um, I don't even totally know why that is, but I think it's because. Most of it was written in lockdown, where we had a lot of time. I was actually had quite a happy time in lockdown because we were, you know, I was in the same place uh, and uh, without travelling anywhere, and and the weather was nice. I know if you were living in a block of flats in in London, it wasn't quite like that. But it, I was in the countryside, and we between us, we, we wrote a lot of songs, sending each other things by computer. And but I think you look back a bit on your life where you are what has happened, what hasn't, could have happened and things like that. And so so it is, yeah, quite emotional. Yeah. I th- I th- maybe poignant and wistful at times. Yeah. One track on the Why Am I Dancing? What Can you tell me about the story behind that? Well, also during the lockdowns, Chris and I wrote a, a musical theatre piece, which is based on the Emperor's New Clothes, and it's called Naked. And um, anyway, there's a scene in that where there's a guy in hospital and he's wondering, and it starts, how did I get here? And then Chris did a dance version of this, and I, because the song and the musical is a ballad, and it sounded great. And so I had to write a new set of lyrics, but I took the original first line, How Did I Get Here? And it became about me dancing in my kitchen, which is really, which is what I was doing, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, you know, you know, when you're cooking, yeah, you sort of cook and dance at the same time, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to be careful, haven't you? You've got to you be don't careful. Spill that boiling no. spaghetti <laughs> water over you. I'm always aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, me dancing in the kitchen while um, while you know cooking a waitrose fish cake. What, now, what what do you cook? I was going to ask about you know your skills in the kitchen. Well, you know, many in a different life. Um, I used to edit cookery books. Did you? I did I, not know that. I was for eighteen months Mary Berry's editor. Get out of here! <laughs> in nineteen seventy nine. Does she remember you? Do you have, do you have a relationship? I don't imagine she does. But I used to think, I wonder whatever happened to Mary Berry, and, <laughs> and then, of course, she's you know an alternative queen or something. Yeah. And um, but so, so I uh, and I used to copy edit. Um, cookery books uh, and as well and I commissioned some as well so I sort of know a bit about cooking so I tend to make up dishes based on what's in the fridge okay and what what springs to mind well that's a true cook Neil oh, makes a, a perfect real... scrambled egg oh really like it's Jay... perfect how, how would you describe a perfect scrambled it's egg it's not too hard it's mm-hmm. not like too soft. runny so you haven't got those yeah. the horrible oh, the uncut spr- white bit that I've the made mucus. Sure, yes. <laughs> it's just cooked to perfection well that's, a, that's yeah. Elizabeth David recipe though <laughs> and I never edited her yeah. <laughs> very important and what about you in the uh, uh, I just Chris? make um, student food do you uh, <laughs> what, what would you say is your, your your best dish that you can cook well I don't really make uh, about two or three but um uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a rub, but it's literally a student food. Uh, you know, like uh, pasta with tu- penne with tuna. Pe- um, yeah, pesto. But, and, um, but, you know, that's because I have a jar, doesn't it? Pesto. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, some, uh, quite often, like last night, I just went to Marks and Spencers and got a chicken kiev. Um, which... <laughs> have, you, have you told me your, your role in chicken kiev? <gasps> Tell me. Well, I mean, I can't really take full credit for this, but I wrote to Marks and Spencers. <laughs> <laughs> said, could you change the spelling of chicken Kiev to Kiev because of the war? Okay. And I got a reply saying, no, we can't do that. Anyway, eventually they did change it. <laughs> um, How's it I, don't, I don't think I can take full Kiev? credit for that. K-I-V. K-Y-I-I-V. I think, yeah. Oh, God. I think, See, yeah. I thought you'd mispronounced it then. No, no, that's no, the correct is, spelling. That's the Ukrainian changed. spelling yes. oh, okay. of, of Kiev. Look at the power mm. of you. Well, I don't really no, think... No, I'm sure it was I, you. I no, 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 I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, when I was listening to the album and I was, and certain tracks kind of were more impactful than others and just this one leapt out at me and I know we asked you to choose songs from the album and Neil, we chose the same one. Oh. So this is A New Bohemia, which I loved as soon this as is I my, heard it. I love all the album. Of course, I do too. But this is... It has, it's certainly become my favourite song on the album. This is a track Chris sent me, the whole, tra- the whole track, pretty much as it is, really. And uh, and it was called Avant-Garde. 
And it sounded like it should be in French almost. And I'd had this idea, I'm looking for a new bohemia, i.e. at one time we used to be hanging around with artists and stuff and people like creative people, more than we seem to do now. Uh, and Because actually we didn't go out as much because we're older. And, uh, <laughs> and so it was wistfully thinking, I'm looking for a new bohemia. And uh, it just fitted perfectly with Chris's melody and, and, word, and uh, music. That was, in fact, the world premiere of that song, A New Bohemia. That is going to be the next single from Pet Shop Boys, would that be right? It is, yeah. It is the, the next single. single. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's lush and warm. The feel of that is beautiful. I mean, what the process of the album was that James Ford replaced, because we make pretty sophisticated demos, he replaced what we call soft synths with, you know, analog synths that he would program. And on that track, I remember we were sitting in the studio and suddenly he's, he said, oh, could you just move out the way, Neil? And, and I moved out of the way and he pulled a set of drums out, put his headphones on. He said, I'm just going to play Chris's Phil Collins drum film. <laughs> <laughs> and he played that and then pushed them back. Um, it, was a, it was an amazing moment. Oh, yeah. God. It sounds like you had a lot of fun doing this album we did. With, with James. It was really straightforward. And uh, in fact, actually, I read an interview where he said the same thing. It was, it it was, was joy really, for him. It was fun, you know, and... Uh, he was amused because we insist on going out for lunch every day and, and then come back and Chris sleeps on the sofa for half an hour. And, uh, you like your naps? Like, I do, yes. Uh, I'm doing this afternoon, actually. There you go. It's very important. Yes. And, and you're doing the video for that? We're so. doing the video for it next week, yes. Uh, and in fact, we've got the director of the film All of Us Strangers, which used our song Rent, yeah. approached our record company and, and he, Andrew Haig, he's called, he's going to direct the video. So that's exciting. That's amazing. Yeah. Is amazing. How much Do you enjoy the video process or is it no, embarrassing? No one in videos enjoys it. Do they not? Um, well, well, I think the director might. Well, I meant the people in it. You know. yeah. oh, yeah. Bounds always <laughs> moan about it because it's a lot of, you know, it's like making a film, there's a lot of hanging around. Yeah. But actually, you know, I do, I actually, when you when they don't take so long to make, um, it is actually quite good fun. And you've seen the treatment for this one, I You've presume. seen the treatment. Okay, do you have to act? Does it require an awful no, lot of acting? No, we don't act. Pop star should never act in videos. It's always a mistake. <laughs> have you ever? Well, we did our film many yeah. years ago, which which was chopped down to make the video for Always On My Mind. And I do remember that starts with us in the car with the, the Joss Ackland behind us. Yes. And we have to act. And um, I think you can see what bad actors we are. Well, I think, I think never, all, we're meant to be quite good. No, no, no I think we're, I'm we're meant to be terrified that there's a lunatic in the back of the car with a knife. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and you know, you just realise it's very difficult acting. <laughs> To be wow. convincing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, questions coming through. Sean Kelly and Gates said, Chris, do you still go clubbing or do you just listen to the music from the comfort of your own home? Mainly from the comfort of my own home. Yeah. Uh, but we are planning to go to Ibiza to a friend's birthday party this summer, so we might do a bit clubbing. But what I do like now is if I do go out, I like going out in the afternoon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what do, you, what do you do in the afternoon? Well, a lot what of kind clubs of... in the afternoon now. Oh, so you don't lose any sleep or anything. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Nice early it's definitely finish. definitely the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lizzie and Bath, can you ask them if they remember in the late 80s, you performed at Ealing's Broadway Boulevard at the under 18 Sunday afternoon disco? We did. Yes. I don't remember that. No, that was like, it was, that was really early on. That yeah. was like the beginning of 1986. Yeah. It was almost St. Gold's first time. It might even be 1985. Yeah. They get Sunday afternoons. Good time, Sunday good, afternoons. Good time to go clubbing. Yeah. Good time to go and see a band. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have more music on the way, but first of all, take a quick break. Radio 2. Happy Saturday. Welcome to your new job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Henry. What a welcome. New to Saturday mornings. It's Ramesh Ranganathan. Hello, Annie. You there? I'm here, yeah. Up against you is your son, Charlie. Are you competitive with, yeah. with Charlie? Well, I don't need to be because there's no chance of him winning. Well, there is a chance. I not hear you. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Ramesh Ranganathan. So glad we've made your day. This <laughs> just got exactly how we all hope. Saturday mornings from 10. On Radio 2. Listen live on BBC Sounds. He made his debut last week. He's uh, taken over from Claudia uh, on Radio 2. And it was a good show, really good show. Oh, right. Yeah, that's Ramesh we were just talking about. Uh, so Neil and Chris are here with us at the moment. Uh, this is from Joe, Gaffney and Sue. Uh, is there an, any album in particular that stands out to the both of you as your proudest piece? You're probably going to have differing opinions about well, this. So all is artists one... say the same thing, which it's is my the latest one. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, the reason that is, it is your proudest one at that time. And this is really new for us. You've just played that song, which I love, that we wrote, A New Bohemia, for the first time anywhere in the world. So mm -hmm. that's a really exciting moment. Um, I remember when we made our first album doing 
we're still finishing it when we're doing the promo for it and um, and saying we are making the most fantastic album. Every song is really good. I'm really, really proud of it. And I did feel like that. And I, actually, I still think it probably holds up now. I like the Alan Partridge answer, which is the greatest hits. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we were writing up because they, they all have one name, um, the, all the titles. Yes, they do, yes. And we were wondering if they do actually make a sentence or they... Maybe a haiku, we were thinking. Whether whether if you put all the words together of all the albums. I mean, is, is there any sense of them at all? Is there any intention with them at all? We, I've, got, I've got them all here. What we've, what, we've, what we've gone back to with this album is we used to try and make them part of a sentence. So you could say, do you have the Pet Shop Boys, please... Who's that? Pet Shop Boys, actually. actually. And this one, Pet Shop Boys, but Pet Shop Boys, nonetheless. Um, it sort of works. Um, I think it's a good title. I really, I really you. like it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's in, it's it's in that tradition. But then some of them are more oblique, like Hot Spot or... Uh, well, Nightlife was about nightlife. Mm. Uh, Elysium? Elysium, we did a photo session in a park in LA called, I don't know how they say it in America, Elysian Park, Elysian Park, I think they say. And um, and that was where we got Elysium from. But it had sort of the idea of paradise, which Mm. was in some of the songs. Um, I don't think there's anything really ties them all together. The haiku is a great idea. but We we thought that was a good idea. That was Jack who came up with that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we asked you for childhood songs. So, Neil, we'll go for yours first of all. Um, I'm intrigued to know what your childhood was like. Was it surrounded by music? I think your family were very musical. Yeah, well, uh, we grew up in a little house on the edge of Newcastle with fields outside, which are now housing estates. Uh, But in those days, sometimes we used to get pigs and cows running around the back garden. It was quite exciting. Uh, And... My f- mother's father was very... I had a stereogram... Well, before stereogram, he had a great big, huge mahogany record player. And, and we used to go around on Sunday afternoons and he would play the soundtrack of, of Oklahoma or something and say, listen to the sound. And it was always the film soundtrack in, in sort of, you know, the latest recording technique. And um, so, yeah, my mother used to sing a lot. And so I felt unselfconscious about singing in a way. Mm. But the first film I ever saw... I think when I was eight years old was The Young Ones with Cliff Richard and the Shadows. Do you remember it being exciting? It was really exciting. Well, you know, it's a great... Um, they, they, they did two good films, That and Summer Holiday, and they're both fantasies. This one always appealed to me because they take over a theatre and put on a show. Well, there you go. Right there. Let's play this. Cliff Richard and the Shadows, and that was The Young Ones, and that was a choice of Neil Tennant, uh, and that was your childhood song. That's my eight-year-old song, yeah. Your eight-year-old song? Yes. Okay. Did you, and you went to theatre school, didn't you? No, I went to, in, in um, Newcastle, there's a famous amateur theatre called The People's Theatre, which still exists, and they have a youth theatre called The Young People's Theatre, and I was a member of that. And um, So you loved performing, or you, you had a I realised rapidly it. that I wasn't a very good actor, but what I did was I wrote a play and directed it, it's a short play, and... Um, and I put together a, an evening of, of readings of poems and bits of books and stuff, and I wrote the songs for that as well. And um, but it's it's funny because it's it has an impact on you because you got used to being on a stage, mm. you know. And there are certain things when we when I go on a stage, <laughs> I'm back in the people's theatre. <laughs> uh, they always tell you to use your um, don't don't use your upstage hand because you cover your face. Yeah. So when you walk onto stage, you. You have your hand uh, in the in the hand away your your microphone in the hand away from the audience. Yeah. What was your first performance or a memorable? My performance? first performance was in Under Milkwood. Oh, nice! Um, and I was a very small speaking part, yeah. but I had to have a Welsh accent. Oh, so you did accents, <laughs> Chris? What about you? Your first time on stage? Take take me there. Oh, uh, there was the um, church panto, right? Which um, we were in. I was in the. Chorus, obviously not a lead part. Uh, oh no, the first thing would have been the school nativity play, wouldn't it? Playing some minor, you know, were you, person at the you back. Were never I was, I was never Jesus or Mary. the lead, um, and it, to this day, um, I'm much happier at the back. Yeah. Um, so that would have been the first. Would have been the school nativity play, and then the, the school panto, which was always a, not school, the church panto. Yeah. Which was always so you a, went to church. A lot of fun. Yeah, the, the Sunday school. Uh, we were used for that. And I remember the song we all had to sing was Give Me Some Men Who Are Stout-Hearted Men. Do you know this song? Who Will Fight For The Right They Adore. I don't, well, Do you remember that? the I like words? It. I remember that. I don't remember the words of any of our songs, but I remember that. That's weird, isn't it? Um, anyway, that was that was pretty good. But yeah. uh, then the only time appearing on stage was um, in the school dance band and things what like that. What about a minute? Well, they oh, I missed something else. 
What? Oh, well, what's yeah. this? well, at university, they needed extras. The English National Opera was in town performing at the Liverpool, Liverpool Empire. Yeah. And um, they were doing... Carmen. Carmen. And um, they, needed, they needed a couple of extras. And I, um, me and my friend went, we thought, we'll never get this anyway. And we became, we were Toreadors in the full oh. regalia. And all we had to do was walk across the stage like this. But you know what? It was absolutely brilliant. Oh, you must have felt great. It was a fantastic experience. There's a great photograph yeah. of Chris as a Toreador. Is that? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. now I want to see that. <laughs> you know each other inside out. Like, watching the two of you speak, it's so lovely to see. Like, you, you fill the gaps in for each other all well, the time. Well, also, we spent the last three weeks doing a lot of interviews. Oh, I see. So right. Kind of, yeah, we're kind of up to speed as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, the next song is from your childhood then, Chris. So we wanted a, a song that reminds you. Of, um, yeah, well, um, I mean, we obviously listen to a lot of records. And I remember we had a lot of 78s and uh, with a lot of records, things like The Laughing Policeman and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And um, But really what I remember from my childhood is that we'd, the family would all sit down and watch television a lot on, like, particularly Sunday evenings. And there was, you know, there was always those great TV themes, weren't there? And, um, Do you remember the singing ringing tree? That, I do. And there was another check one I used to like. Um, yes, I think it was check. Was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was some gorgeous music to Robinson Crusoe. Yes, which was on every every Saturday during the summer holidays. Yeah, which incredibly was evocative. Re- really great. And, and one of the songs I really enjoyed was the music for Black Beauty. Let's um, hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, because we, we got the best bit. We got the idea. Oh, dear. And, I mean, we, you were just saying the influence on Pet Shop Boys, you could be heard in that record. I didn't realise until we listened to it then, but the, it's got everything, hasn't it? It's got the French horns, the strings, the uplifting chords. Yeah, the whole it's all thing. in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, more questions. Nick in Plymouth, um, has there ever been a film that you wish that you'd been asked to score? Ooh. We made a policy decision, or our manager did, actually, about 10 years ago. She said, we're not going to go after film scores because when you write a film score, the director sends it back and says, you've got to change this, you've got to change this, then they've got to change it again, and, you'll just, and you won't like it, so we're not going to go after them. So we've Good we, policy. We, we, so um, we've sort of put it out of our heads, really. Yeah. Another question, Gareth Price. Um, can you ask Neil and Chris, if there was a film about their lives and career, like Bohemian Rhapsody or Rocket Man that recently have been made, who would you want to portray you on screen? <laughs> We can come back to this if you want to think about it a little bit more. Yes, maybe just have a little think about that. And what would be the best bit in the film? So I'm going to leave that with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to play this next. And I was watching the Imagine documentary that you've done, which is, I mean, really fascinating. It's a wonderful watch. It really is. Actually, lovely. it was made, the woman who made it, uh, Louise Locke, which is good, she did a great job because she mm. co produced it, filmed it, edited it. It's amazing, really. Yeah. Um, and we were dreading it, I've got to be honest. We were dreading it. Why? Because we let someone into our lives with a film camera. So you were exposed. That's really against the rules. And, but in fact, it, she did a wonderful job. Yeah. There was a bit where you were talking about uh, music when it was incredibly exciting for you and the year that you cited was 1981. And you were yeah. saying about... That, I think well, that's because that's, that's when we met. Yeah. That oh, was, was the year you met. 1981, oh, yeah. It's good job someone keeps a diary, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <Chris. laughs> um, Yeah. But there were many great bands, weren't there? The no. Top of the Pops was just such a. a that was a classic era for Top of the Pops when you had the. I mean, 1981 is the year of the Human League, actually. Uh, um, but also, it's the year. Uh, I remember when we first talked about music, apart from David Bowie um, and Kraftwerk, we both liked Soft Cell, and their single was Bed Sitter. In fact, Chris lived in a bed sitter, and I lived in in a studio flat, I one room with a bathroom and kitchen, so it's probably bedsit. Yeah. And we both love this song, uh, this Soft Cell second single, uh, Bedsitter. Okay. Soft Cell and Bedsitter. I mean, that is just a stunning record. And they were so good, weren't they? That I mean, was they... also our lives at that time. Well, yeah. Pretty absolutely. much, anyway. Yeah. I mean, I was also working 
in book publishing, but nonetheless, it was. We, we, we used to go out every night in those days. Yeah, we do something called up close and personal, which I'm going to do the other side of this. So going back to the era of being in the bedsit, we do up close and personal. So I want to know what was your first job? What was the very first job that you did? Uh, do you mean like paper round or? Yeah, 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 job? yeah. I did a paper round um, when I did my A levels. I had that summer off in 1972. I worked for. Um, a betting shop. Did you? So did my sister. And then all my friends did work for Ladbrokes the Bookmakers. Yeah. And I used to be able to calculate an ITV7, and now I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Chris, what about you? Oh, uh, I had jobs like that, but living in Blackpool, um, one of my best jobs was a ride operator on the Pleasure Beach. Operated, you actually did that? What was the Operated the big wheel. Oh. And, and on some t- occasions, I had to operate the um, the spinning house room. What, I forgot what it was called now. Haunted <laughs> swing or something it was called. Yeah. Uh, they, they're both gone now, sadly. Oh. But uh, when I was there, um, they were opening the uh, Revolution ride, and we had to get in early to go and test it every morning. So, um, do, do you like fairground rides now? Um, no, not anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of them. <laughs> I thought, well, actually, there came a point in my life, and I thought, I don't need to be doing this. I don't need to scaring the pants off myself, you know, for no reason. So yeah. I just stopped at that point. They stopped. But I did used to like it. Do you, how do you feel about Blackpool now? I love Blackpool. You I'm do going, going there, you know, next week. I think. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, very fond of it. I'm doing a gig up there. It's, it, they, I did it last year, and they were just amazing. The people of Blackpool were so warm, and it's, oh, it's a great yeah, audience. We great played audience. there about three or four where, times. Where are you yeah. playing? Um, can you remember? No. So I put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the that. Tower, the Tower <laughs> Ballroom. It's the Tower Ballroom, yeah. Yes. That's where I was before, oh, and that's where I'm going place. back to. Amazing we used to place. go there when I was a child, and we used to, um, the, the twist had just come out, the yeah. twist again, and we used to go on this huge ballroom uh, with the whole family, you know, my mum and dad and everything, yeah. and, we'd go, and I would go on and dance to Chubby Checker when I was about <laughs> five or something. Yeah. That's the first dance I ever did, really, the twist. Was yeah. it? It's quite easy to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, another question. Um... Karaoke? Do you ever do karaoke? Would you ever do karaoke? If so, what would just, what would the song be that you'd love to sing? Well, actually, the last time we were in Japan, which was five years ago, me, our programmer Pete Gledel, and our tour manager Andy Crookston went out for dinner. Actually, you came out for dinner, then you went by the hotel, and we went out for a drink, and we ended up in a karaoke bar. Yeah. Now, the Japanese take karaoke really seriously. You're not allowed to take, to make fun of it. No. And um, so I sang Hey Jude. Oh, wow. And that's a big that's, one to go for. Well, all everyone who in the, in the bar who was Japanese, they were all Japanese apart from us three, they all sang along, and it was a great moment. Oh. Um, so that's my my best character. Yeah, yeah, memory. yeah, that's very good. It's my son's name, and it that whole song haunts him, you can imagine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever we go, whenever yes. that uh, plays, yeah. Um, it's become really, a football anthem as well, hasn't has it? it? It's sung at a lot of football grounds. Oh, so. gosh. Yeah. Oh, no, I would never do karaoke because, um, well, I, I can't. <laughs> I find can't. it very hard to sing in tune. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to be embarrassing. Same, same. Uh, coolest feature I, in I your home. I have an auto-tune box with me. <laughs> coolest, <laughs> if you could auto-tune yourself, that would yeah, be great. Be, yeah. Yeah, put it through auto tune. I'm amazed the they have an invented one that does that actually. Sorry? I'm amazed they have an invented one that does that. Yeah. Because uh, I, I think it would be possible. Well, then maybe, Chris, you and I could go out then for a night. We'd do, do karaoke it, yeah. together, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, coolest feature in your home? Something that is very precious or special in your home that you really love? Maybe it's a place, a desk, um, a gadget, is a signed photograph. Uh, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not really about, but I mean, I'd be quite happy to have nothing in the house, really. You must have something quite flash in your home. Fashion. Um, flash. Flash. Oh, flash. Flash. Jack, right, I always quote this. Oh, I'll tell you what I have got. Yeah. A table tennis table. I sort of ah. flash, but um, I do like it. That's the kind of thing I was looking for, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're good at table tennis? I love playing table tennis. I can get good. Um, Very competitive. Then, yeah, well, actually, uh, all of us really? are competitive. The whole family are. Um, so I'm, I'm probably the least competitive, um, but um, I love playing table tennis. Yeah. So out of the two of you, who'd win if you were playing table tennis? Oh God, I wouldn't play. <laughs> would you know? <laughs> because you know who'd win. No, I well actually, I don't even. I suppose I could remember how to play. I'm played since I was a kid. Mm. But people have really quick reflexes, don't they, for table tennis? It's, you have to be super, super quick. Well, that's the thing with table tennis. Sometimes you think, I don't know how I got that back. Yeah, um, it's, it's just a, instinct. It's, it's just so quick. Instinct, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Neil, what about you? Coolest feature or thing in your home? Well, I, I collect art, so I've got quite a lot of artworks, so... OK, your favourite bit of art? Um, well, I've got a painting that's about to be loaned to um, the gallery, and it's by a painter of the 1930s, a female artist called Gluck. 
and she she was in a long affair with the with a florist called Constance Spry, who was the first oh, yeah. kind of posh florist. And so she used to do these very beautiful paintings of um, of flout arrangements. And there's and there's one which is almost slightly sexual looking and it's of two it's of a bunch of lilies but it's quite there's something there's something quite fascinating about it and um, that's probably the one that's come to mind anyway let's play another track from the album the album is nonetheless and this is the song we talk, spoke about earlier on this is why am i dancing why am I- The album comes out in just over three hours' time, midnight tonight. That's, That's right, exciting. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is exciting. We're on Spotify, 12.01. Yeah. yeah. This this does feel like an album launch show. So. No, it is. The album yeah. is called Nonetheless, and that is Pet Shop Boys and Why Am I Dancing? Um, what's the best award that you've ever won? It... Not necessarily music. Is there oh, anything the that you? We, we, oh, we've got the World you. Arts Award, yeah. two thousand and three, for music. Previous winners: Paul McCartney, and Michael Jackson. Okay. We, we were presented it by Mikhail Gorbachev. <laughs> which is okay. why we went. <laughs> which is why we went. Yeah. yeah. And oh, he was actually very nice. Was he? he and was his not- daughter came up to us in the dinner afterwards, and um, she'd had a few glasses of vodka, I think. And, um, and she said, oh, you know, when I was a child, I grew up listening to your music at home. And, of course, home was the Kremlin. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You've got so many good stories. <laughs> OK, who would play you in a the film then? In, uh, yeah. um, well, I'm, I think this is probably going to be set in the 80s. Yeah. Um, and the young Neil Tennant is played by Ben Whishaw. Oh, very nice. Good casting, good casting. And, and the young and Chris Lowe? current Neil, uh, the current Chris Lowe, I don't know if you can do a Northern accent or not, but I'll go for Jack O'Connell. Jack O'Connell, good one. Very nice. I think, we think, I think we think it's a comedy. A comedy, OK. What, what would the laughs be from? And where's the comedy come in? Well, um, as I was saying before, um, we famously are very bad at leaving the stage because we'll t- invariably turn to face each other and bump into each other. So. We, we, did that with Gorbach- often. we did that with Gorbachev. No way. Yeah. We did it with Gorbachev. Yeah, it's... Um, Pretty standard for us, actually. So, um, okay, so there'll be lots of that will be a, run, a running gag. Stage. There's right. a certain amount of slapstick, yeah. and then also maybe our first visit to New York, where we where we go to the Roxy Roller Rink to see Madonna or someone. I think and we give the address to the taxi driver, and then we, the taxi driver's got his girlfriend in the front. We suddenly think we've been they're going to take us and kill us <laughs> because. There's no one. Well, there's numbers on the on yeah. the on the tax or anything, and then suddenly they drive into a deserted car park, and we think, "Oh my God, this is it!" It's and all then, over. Then he turns around. It's perfectly nice guy. He says, uh, 50, uh, 50, uh, 51, corner ninth," and, um, and we, it was, I've given him the wrong address. Oh, <laughs> <It's just> a, <laughs> <laughs> and we just say, "Just take us back to Broadway, will you?" <laughs> <laughs> exit songs. We asked you for the last song you'd like to listen to uh, as you exit this planet. And Chris, we're going to go with yours first of all. Well, I've chosen Ain't No Stopping Us Now by McFadden and Whitehead, which is one of my all-time favourite records. The trouble is, I love this record so much, I won't actually want to die. As you want it on repeat? I want it on repeat. So, you just, so yeah. I'll never actually die. So much emotion in this song, Chris, isn't there? So For much. For me, and so much hope and everything, and how far we've come, and... Kind of, yeah... Yeah, reflects the journey that, that, that you've been on as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, thank you so much for coming in and doing this on the it's evening. Been great. Coming out. It's yeah, been so, I yeah, love it. Really exciting. Good. 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 And we will end on your exit song, Neil. Well, so my exit song, go it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me about 20 minutes to go, I think. Uh, um, <laughs> but it's the first piece of classical music I ever loved. It was played for us at school once when I was about 12 years old. And it's by Vaughan Williams, Fantasia on a Theme by Thomas Tallis. And it's very beautiful and very kind of English and serene. And um, I would die reasonably happily to this, I think. Well, that's just a taster of that beautiful, beautiful piece of music. Neil, thank you. Lovely thing to choose. Thank you. It's nice, a nice way there. to die. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was the idea. <laughs> um, congratulations on the album. Thank you so much for coming in. Love you to be here. Thank coming you. out in three hours' time. Petrol Boys, thank you.